Hey, today uh, we're just going to kind of talk a little bit about Jesus' frame of reference. Um, we've been alluding to this uh, over the last couple of days and saying that <clears throat> when I come to the scriptures, if I come with kind of an effort to control or manipulate them to make them say what I want them to say instead of hear what God intended them to say, um, that's I'm coming there out of my flesh. And, and we're going to look um, in the in the next couple days about the uh, Pharisees and the Sadducees and their frame of reference, how they looked at the scriptures. But Jesus, uh, very interestingly, um, held the scriptures in such high regard that we should too. I mean, if I, if I love and trust Jesus, if I've made a commitment to him, and Jesus held a view of the scriptures that said they're authoritative, they're authoritative, they're trustworthy, um, they can be counted upon, uh, they are to be woven into the structure of my life, my frame of reference, then I should too. Uh, Matthew chapter 5 in the Sermon on the Mount is a beautiful text where Jesus talks about um, the scriptures. And so his Bible would have consisted of um, the law, the books of Moses, which is the first five books of the Bible, um, the prophets, which... Um, the prophets would have gone in Jesus' Bible from, really, from Joshua uh, all the way through Malachi. Um, and his Bible probably concluded with um, Second Chronicles, um, which kind of tells, tells the, the story. So we may consider those somewhat historical books, but Jesus would have seen all those as contained in the prophets. And then um, the Psalms or the other writings would have been a third part of Jesus of Jesus Bible, uh, and it's and it is it is our Old Testament. That's our Old Testament is Jesus Bible. So listen to what Jesus says. Uh, he's talking and trying to create clarity because as he speaks to a Jewish audience, they would have held those in high regard, right? They would have also seen those as their Bible, their um, the message from God come, came to them, comes to them through those, and they hold, they hold them in the highest esteem. So listen to what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5, verse 17. He says, Do not think I have come to abolish the law and prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. Uh, that word abolish is kataluo, kataluo, and it means to uh, tear something down, uh, to destroy it, uh, what we might say in our culture, a lot of people are deconstructing their faith. Uh, if something's deconstructed, if you've got a house and someone and someone tears all the siding off the house and, and guts the house, they've deconstructed the house so they can reconstruct the house. So Jesus says, I'm not, I've not come to deconstruct the law and the prophets. I've not come to tear those down or abolish those or get rid of those. I've come to fulfill. The, the word in Greek for fulfill is plerao, plerao. And it, it's really an interesting concept and idea. Um, it's like <clears throat> if you're engaged, marriage is the fulfillment of your engagement, right? If you're engaged, then you're looking forward to union in marriage. And so engagement is fulfilled when you say, I do, right? You're married. Yay! You're now married. You fulfilled your engagement. Or uh, another way of looking at it is if a, if a ship is being built, right? Um, it's in, if it's in its construction phase and they're working on the hull and they're working on all the different parts of the ship and the rudder and, and everything about it, they're working on it, that ship finds fulfillment in its... Um, inaugural voyage, um, when it sets sail, it has come to fulfillment. In other words, fulfillment is the completion of one's purpose. And so Jesus said, I didn't come to take away from the law and the prophets. I came to be their fulfillment. So literally he's saying the fulfillment of the scriptures the, their fulfillment is found in me, in, in Jesus. That's massive. That's, that's how Jesus saw the scriptures, is that 
Everything they did was point to him, point to his coming, point to his presence, point to his purposes. And so when Jesus came, he said, I am the fulfillment of of these. Now notice the text. I'm going to read on just a little bit. Verse 18, he says, For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth disappear, not, not the smallest letter or the slightest stroke of the pen by any means will disappear from the law and everything until everything is accomplished. Beautiful. Not only is Jesus saying that he is the fulfillment of those things, but everything about him the scriptures, the Old Testament, the prophets and the law and the writings, the Psalms, they speak of me and they will not reach their complete, um, they will not reach fulfillment or accomplishment until everything, every detail about me is accomplished. So he's saying that in his coming and his second coming, in those comings, his coming, first coming, and his second coming, all that has to happen for the scriptures to reach their climax, their ultimate fulfillment. Jesus held the highest regard for the scriptures because they pointed to him. The fulfillment of God's kingdom and purposes that come through a relationship with Jesus. I want to invite you to simply ponder with me for a moment. Uh, a deepening understanding that when we read the scriptures, um, and particularly the Old Testament, that everything in them is a progressive revelation of the coming of Jesus. Lord, we, uh, we want to absorb the beautiful progression of, through the entire Old Testament, that the books of Moses, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, or all the law points to the one who will fulfill the law, points to the one who will be a better sacrifice, points to the one who will be the ultimate high priest, points to the one who is the ultimate prophet, who is the ultimate king, points to the one who is the sanctuary, is the dwelling place of God. Jesus, we thank you that the scriptures testify to who you are. Lord, draw us more deeply into a place of relinquishing control as the scriptures begin to form an accurate frame of reference for how we see life, ourselves, others, and most supremely, how we see you. I look forward to being with you tomorrow. God bless. As you meditate on the scriptures, I pray that they enrich your sense of his presence and his deep unwavering love for you. God bless.